Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome into this message. So exactly seven months ago today on this very same day, I released a message through this ministry and I said that, and I'm gonna read it here to you all. The message is titled, it's all about to come full circle. I released that message December 14th, seven months ago. Today is July 14th and I'm in my prayer time with God this morning. And I hear the Lord say, as soon as I sit down right here at this very desk to pray, this very table, as soon as I sit down to pray, I hear the Lord say, full circle. And I heard the Lord say, there are many seeds you've planted in the past that you didn't know were seeds, yet they are about to come full circle and they will come full circle this year. They will come to harvest this year. So I wrote it down and yes, the Lord was talking to me about me, but then as I always share with you all, there are some times where the Lord will give me a message that's for me. And there are times where the Lord will give me a message that yes, he is ministering to me, but at the same time, this is a Rima word for the body of Christ as a whole. And I'm saying this because this message that he gave to me seven months ago, today, December 14th, I sit down and I hear the Lord say the same thing seven months later to the date, full circle. So I wanted to release this message with you, with you all today and to you all today because when I sat down in my prayer time today, and the Lord said full circle and he told me exactly what I just read to you. He really pressed on my spirit that there are a lot of you who have made it to this point in time in the year, July 14th, 2023, and you were thinking to yourself, there are things that you have been believing in God for that you have not seen come full circle yet. There are things that you have started, that the Lord has started in you, that you have not seen come full circle. You have not seen that thing come to pass. It has not made its way back around to you. There are seeds that you have planted, and I'm gonna to touch on that in a second, so put a pin in that. There are seeds you have planted intentionally, and you have not seen a harvest from those seeds. Don't worry about it, because one, understand that we don't plant seeds for the purposes of receiving a harvest. We plant seeds because that is just what we do as children of God. One man plants, another man waters, God brings the increase. It's just what we do. We plant seeds because it is our work to do so. It is us planting a seed through faith and we're backing it up by works. We trust that God is going to bring the increase and we don't, we don't even care how it's going to come to us. We know that God is faithful and he's going to bring it to us in the way that we need it to come to us. And every time it's different. It isn't always money. It doesn't always come to you in the form of whatever it is that you're asking for. It's different every time. And that's okay because God knows what we need, not what it, he cares more about what we need versus what it is that we're asking for. Because a lot of times the things that we ask for, they're not things that we need. They're not even things that we, we genuinely deep down want. We're just very surface level with it. But God can look in our heart. God knows what we need. And he knows that the thing that he's going to give us that we actually need, that's what we really want. Let me know if that makes sense. So it's going to come full circle. There are a lot of you who are looking at the landscape of your life right now and you're thinking we're we're half we're more than halfway through 2023 and there are things that you have not yet seen come to pass i'm telling you to hold on to your seat because god says it's going to come full circle and it's going to come full circle this year you're going to see it before the end of this year and i am saying this by the spirit of god i feel the anointing of god on this I'm going to put, I'm going to link that message that I did December 14th, 2022. I'm going to link it below in the description. Y'all, if I forget, please remind me in the comments, but I'm going to link it below in the description so you can go back and listen to that and then, you know, come back and re-listen to this. But I want to read to you a few scriptures because there are some of you who have planted seeds intentionally and there are those of you who have planted seeds unintentionally. Those seeds are going to come to harvest this year. It's going to come full circle. So I want to take you to some scriptures that the Lord had given me. Uh, let's start. I have the good old KJV out here. Let's start at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It says, But this I say, 
He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And I'm going to take you to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 after this, because my Bible references that, and it's very important and crucial to what I'm going to tell you. So when this scripture is talking about sowing and reaping bountifully and sparingly, a lot of people like to relate these scriptures to money, which you can relate these script this scripture to money. But he's talking about sowing, period. There are times where many of you have sown your time into people, and I'm talking about people who knew that they could not pay you back the same amount of time. People who knew that there was no way in the world they could ever give you anything back in comparison to the value of, of what you've given them. There are many of you who have sown money into people, people who I'm talking about, you know that they, in, in no way in the world, would be able to pay you back, but yet you've given it anyway because you have a pure heart. You didn't give it to them with the intention of receiving it back. You gave it to them because you're just, you just have a pure heart like that. There are many of you who have sown into others, meaning you have spent hours on top of hours um, mentoring these people, ministering to them, just pouring into them with some knowledge and advice and just really just trying to pull them out of whatever situation they've got themselves into, people who still to this day have not taken the advice of the Lord that really he was using you to be a vessel to speak to that person. I'm talking about there are many of you who have poured into people where they just it just fell on deaf ears. That's you planting seeds. And because you have spent time after time, hours after hours, resources after resource, just pouring into people, and you didn't see it as a seed, but God seed it as a seed, even though it may not have been received well by that person, by that organization, by whatever it was you were pouring your time, energy, and resources in, God had still seen it as a seed. It wasn't intentional on your part, but God still seen it as a seed. This is what I mean by... Um, I said a few messages back, someone were saying, how can I sow my seed of faith? This is what I mean by that. When you are, when you're spending, use an example, when you're spending hours pouring into someone, I mean, your time and you're speaking to someone and you're speaking to them, you're trying to pour into them wisdom, knowledge and advice to pull them out of whatever situation they're in. This could be a family member. This could be a friend. That's you. Pour, you have faith that God is going to turn that thing around in their life. And you're backing it up with your works by spending time and energy pouring into them. It's, it's the same way it works with money. These are seeds that you're planting. God is going to send someone else along prayerfully to water those seeds. It's going to spark a, a remembrance in their mind of something that you have said to them. And then God is going to be able to bring them increase on the behalf of you planting a seed within them. That is how it's supposed to work. Sometimes it may fall on deaf ears because we all have our own free will. But God's seen that. He's seen the abundance of the seeds that you have planted when you weren't even being intentional about it. These are things that scripture talks about when he says in, I'm going to go back there, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. bountifully. When it comes to biblical principles, you can apply it to your life across the board. I'm talking about you can apply it to your health. You can apply it to your finances. You can apply it to your relationships. Apply it to your life across the board. When you sow into other people, I'm talking about you pour into them wisdom, knowledge, and advice, and you just pour your time, energy, and all of this into them, you're going to receive that back. People are going to nap. People's going to give it back to you in abundance. That's how the principles of God work. It's not just it's not just about money. Yes, you can use it. You can apply it to money as well. It works the same way with our temple. If you sow bountifully in a healthy way into your temple, I mean, if you sow healthy food in abundance into your temple bountifully a, lo a lot, like you really put time and energy and resources into taking care of your body, your body's gonna give back to you. It's gonna give life back to you. It works the same way across the board. So I wanna take you as well to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. And I really want you to stick with me here because this is what the Spirit of God has is saying in this season for you who are listening to this. Because I know there are many of you who are thinking, Lord, you said that there are things that are supposed to come to pass, but I'm not seeing it. I don't see how it's gonna happen. God says it's gonna come to pass by the end of this year. 
Proverbs chapter, let's see, 11, verse 24, and then I'm going to go down to 28. 24, it says, There is that scattereth, yet increase, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. This is really crucial. I want you to hear me when I read this again. There is that scattereth, and yet increase, and there is that withholdeth more than than is meat, but it tended to poverty. So what is what is the word of God telling us here? This is telling us that it doesn't matter if it's money, it doesn't matter if it's time, it doesn't matter if it's, is, if it's um, energy, it doesn't matter if it's resources, it does not matter what it is. If you be sure, if you're the kind of person, because you're just pure like that, God has built you that way, you're a child of God, and you just love pouring into other people, it doesn't matter what it is, You just you just give. You just pour into other people. If you're the kind of person throughout your entire entire life, and I want to put a pin in this because the Lord, the, the Spirit of God keeps interrupting um, what it is that I'm saying. Um, God has a way of making sure that the righteous always come out on top. You may think that people who are wicked, people who take advantage of other people, they're getting away with it. But God has a way of making sure that his children, the righteous, always come out on top. And it's a, it's a outlined to us in his word. So if you're someone who you're constantly giving to people, you're constantly pouring into people and you feel like no one ever gives back to you. No one ever has, no one ever comes to your rescue. No one ever comes to support you at your events, your things. No one ever is there for you when you need them. You're always giving people money, but no one wants to give to you when, when you need. You're always giving people furniture, clothes, letting people drive your car, letting people take your things, letting people take your time. You're always pouring into people your time, energy, and resources. But when it comes to you, there is no one to be found. I'm telling you, God has a way of balancing it out. God has a way of setting things right when it comes to his children. It says here in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, yet is that scattereth and yet increase. Those of you who scattereth out your time, energy, and resources because you're doing it for the purposes of just pouring into other people and giving back and just serving and ministering to people, you should have increase because the word of God says so. It's coming to you full circle. These are seeds. There is that scattereth and yet increase. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tended to poverty. Another scripture that aligns with this is where the word of God tells us the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. This means that you think, right? And it looks like people who are wicked or people who are out for selfish gain, that they are on top. And I'm telling you that God has a way of balancing it out. God has a way of setting things right. And God has a way of making sure that the righteous always come out on top. Then I'm going to go down to Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 28, where it says, He that trusts trust in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Why? And I'm going to loop this into Pro, uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. But what does this mean? He that trusts in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Why is it saying this? Because children of God who are righteous, you don't trust, you don't hold on to things with a tight hand. With everything, you have an open hand. But you hold on to God. I wrote this down as a quote at the um, at the very at the front of my Bible. I wrote, and I wrote this years ago, about maybe four or five years ago. With everything in this life, have an open hand. Money, clothes, material things, only hold and grip tight to God. So those of you who live a set-apart, righteous life, this is not something that, you know, I wrote this down because I like to look at it just to remind myself, okay, this is who God, when people want to, there are people who come into your life, I'm telling you, y'all, there are people who come into your life and you pour into them, you give them time, energy, and resources, and the moment you tell them no once, the moment you tell them you can't help them out once, you can't give them money once, you can't be on the phone with them for hours once, you're the selfish one. You're the one that only cares about you. And you have to remind yourself sometimes, no, this is who I am. I hold on tight to God, but with everything, I have an open hand. So you're not going to tell me, they're not going to tell you that you're selfish when you just say no once. But I'm telling you that God is a way of setting things right. And we have to understand that the enemy is a liar. He's been a liar from the, from the beginning. 
You have to remind yourself who you are in God, who God says you are. So I said, I wrote this down here about maybe five years ago. With everything in this life, have an open hand, money, clothes, material things, only hold on and grip tight to God. So I'm going to take you back to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. It says, he that trusts in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Why is it saying this? Because there are many times where children of God, you who are righteous, you think that it appears like people who have riches and people who have money or people who have all these material things. It appears like it appears that that are, that they are on top. We can't talk today, um, but the word of God clearly says that if they are trusting in those things, if, they, if they're putting all their faith in those things, if they're holding on tight to those things, and they're allowing it to rule their life, that's what whew, something flying around. That's where their trust is at. It says they shall fall but the righteous shall flourish as a branch why because with all of those things you have an open hand you have an open hand with money you have an open hand with your with your time you have an open hand with resources you're not holding on to these things and because of that god is going to make sure it always comes back to you in abundance it's always going to come full circle back into your life in abundance i want to take you to uh, psalms chapter 1 verse 3 and as i'm going there i want to explain to you that even though, you know, it may not come back into your life right away, trust that God is going to find a way to bring it back to you multiplied, multiplied. Psalms chapter one, verse three. And I read this uh, scripture to you all uh, a couple messages ago. And he shall be like a tree talking about you who are righteous. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. I'm going to read that again. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he do shall prosper. The reason why it says in season is because like I just said, it doesn't all, it doesn't come back to you immediately. There's a certain season that has to come to pass where God will make sure that it comes back into your life multiplied. And that season, God is saying, will be like be before the end of this year, full circle, full circle moment. Do not, do not grow weary in well doing. I believe that's what the word of God says. <laughs> but you will, um, you will receive if you faint not. I want to make sure that I have that right. But really, what God is saying is, there are many of you who are growing weary. And you're starting to look around you at the landscape of your life and you're thinking there are many things that you're believing in God to bring to pass. And God is saying, there is, listen, he's saying there are seeds that you have planted that you don't even know you planted. And he's going to bring it back, multiplied into your life. It's going to come full circle. And I'm telling you, when that thing comes back into your life, multiplied, you're going to know where the root of it's from. You're going to know what seed you planted. You're going to know exactly why God is bringing that into your life. So, Trust that God is faithful. Trust that God knows where you're at in life. Trust that he knows your address. Trust that he knows your financial situation. Trust that he knows what's going on in your relationships with your children, at your home. He knows everything. He knows exactly what you need. He knows when you need it. And it's going to come back into your life multiplied, full circle. I want you to comment below, full circle. I want you to receive that into your life because it's going to happen this year. So for those of you who were wanting to check out the Promise and Mentorship, it is, um, the site is back up and working. You can uh, click on the link in the description below and it will take you there. Oh, there's something flying in here. It's really getting my nerves. Um, and for those of you who are wanting to plant seed in fertile ground, and, and this is, especially if there's something that I said, I encourage you to do that because I'm a firm believer of seed, seed time and harvest time. There's an entire kingdom economy playlist that I've done on this. You guys can check that out in the playlist section. There's about eight messages in there that are blessed thousands of people. I am working on many new things to come for the ministry. So I really want you to stay plugged into it. So make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, and that will make sure that you're not missing out on anything. I also ask that you share this message with someone that you know, I know that it's going to bless them. I also want you to comment below if this has blessed you. So yes, there are many links below 
for you to get connected to the ministry. I invite you to check those out and watch that message that I did December 14, 2022. Literally seven months later to the date, God released the same word to me and it's for a reason. It's for a reason. You're not watching this by accident. You're listening to this for a reason. So I love you all. I'm always praying for you and I'll talk with you in the next message.